What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. So for today's head-to-head -head comparison, we are going to take a look at the 2024 BMW M4 and compare it to the Nissan GTR. Both of these are two-door sports cars that actually have back seats, they're very practical, and they offer a lot of performance. So we are going to start off with the prices for both of these. For the M4 competition, this has a starting MSRP right around $83,000. And this is powered by a three liter twin power turbo inline six, paired to an eight speed M Steptronic automatic, pumping out 523 horsepower, 479 pound feet of torque. That is sent through the X-Drive all wheel drive system. For the Nissan GTR, this has a starting MSRP right around $115,000, so slightly more, of course, than the BMW. This is powered by a 3.8 liter twin turbo V6 paired to a six speed automatic, pumping out 565 horsepower, 467 pound feet of torque. Again, that power sent through the X-Drive all wheel drive system. Both of these weigh in right around 3,900 pounds. Zero to 60 for the BMW, 3.4 seconds, 2.9 seconds for the GTR. I have seen some other numbers state that the M4 can be slightly quicker, so they are roughly in that same ballpark. Top speed is going to be 180 and 205 for the GTR. And then as far as fuel economy goes, which isn't too important for uh, sports cars like this, for the BMW, it's 16 and 22, and then 16 and 22 for the GTR. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, they do offer a much different look. For the BMW, it has the kidney grill, forward-facing camera, all the sensors, LED lights up top, and then on the GTR, a much different grill design with GTR right in the middle, still plenty of cutouts to provide a lot of cooling. There's all these sensors, much different design for the headlight housings. There's even some fog lights for the GTR as well. And then some functional inlets up on the hood. For the BMW, you just have these lines in the front section there just to help blend it in much nicer. And then there's gloss black for the entire lower section versus just the corner pieces for the M4. Now, as we work our way to the side, there's a few different wheel options that you can get. So for these particular models on the BMW, a very nice multi-spoke design with a two-tone pattern, M Sport compound brakes. For the Nissan, this has Brembo's up front and then a multi-spoke design. Take your pick. Either one I think looks really nice for both of these models. They each have a trim accent with GTR and M4 comp behind that. And then you'll notice too, the gloss black for the side skirts are nearly identical. Very nice contoured lines for both of them, just to give it a little bit more sporty look. You'll notice too on the BMW, we have gloss black with the turn signal and the camera. Nothing for the body colored mirrors on the GTR. But as we take a look at their overall side design, You'll notice that the back windows for the GTR are indeed much smaller. Look at how much larger they are on the M4. We have a little bit more, I'll call it a boxy design for the GTR versus the flowing roof line all the way to the back for the BMW. So very different in their side designs along with the angles for the lines. You'll notice it splits on the M4 versus one continuous line on the GTR. And then as we work our way to the back, let's start off with the M4 here. You'll notice the backup camera, very small spoiler, quad tip dual exhaust, LED lighting of course, and you can remote start the GTR. This also has a power trunk too. Now I did a full video on this exact vehicle, so if you wanna see greater details, take a look at that. But you can also fold down the back seats too to give yourself that much more practicality. So even with the back seat space, you can put in larger items if you need to do so. Now on the GTR, backup camera is located by the license plate. There's that oval design for the taillights and turn signals, and then the quad tip dual exhaust. There's carbon fiber down below too. And then you'll notice some heat extraction vents in the lower section, and of course, the massive trunk mounted spoiler. Now in back, there is a button underneath, so you can release this. This is not a power operated trunk. So it is manual, of course. And you will notice right off the bat that we have a much different entrance for the trunk space. So it is a little bit more narrow on the GTR versus the BMW there. And the back seats do not fold down. So this is the amount of space that you get for the GTR. So you cannot fold those seats down for extra storage. Now let's work our way to the interiors where for the BMW, we have the 
proximity door handle. So of course you can unlock it, of course, and lock it. Pretty simple door panel. You can, however, get different options and color interiors. So just for this model, this is what it's featured. We have the Harman Kardon as well as interior lighting, memory seating adjustments, side mirror controls too. And then we are going to jump straight to the back seats. Now you're not buying both of these vehicles for the back seat space. However, if you are buying them and you plan to have some people in the back at five foot 10, I can actually fit comfortably in this M4. We have climate adjustments. You have a pretty good amount of leg room. I have that seat moved a little bit farther back. And then as far as headroom goes for the M4 at five foot 10, I am almost upright. So I don't have to duck that much but I can sit almost up right here. I feel very comfortable being in the back, especially with the armrest here and the large window. It's definitely comfortable. And then you can even fold the seat down, of course, like I mentioned earlier, or you can fold down the middle by itself. So you have an armrest and better accessibility into the back. And here's a look at visibility with the massive windows. So it doesn't feel too claustrophobic from the back seat. And then as we work our way to the front seat, which will move backwards there, we'll take a look at the interior. Now, like I said, I did the full review, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Now for this model, we have M1 and M2, so you can actually set up your driving profiles with these. Massive paddle shifters, all of the controls on the steering wheel to adjust and go through everything. So there's the massive digital gauge cluster to go through this info, as well as the head-up display. There's storage, all of your lighting adjustments, and then all the info that you need is at your fingertips, including the M Drift Analyzer. So this is an all wheel drive vehicle, but you can have it default to two wheel drive. So that way you can drift around in your M4. We have heated and ventilated seats, all your climate adjustments, wireless charging, a lot of controls for that screen. And then of course that 360 camera system, as well as adjustments for the transmission, which I'll talk about. You have your camera system, parking sensors, and then even M mode. So you can actually change what the gauge cluster looks like just to have that. You have the exhaust note too, and then some additional storage. So it's a really nice, comfortable place to be. And from the driver's seat, you have those large windows so you can clearly see in both direction. So very nice layout for this modern interior. And then as we work our way to the GTR, we do have the same proximity key, so you can use this button on the back side to lock and unlock it. However, with the door handle, you have to open up this way and then you can gain access to the interior. So for this interior, pretty similar, I would say, much different layout with the position of the window controls, Bose audio for this, little bit of storage, no memory seating option for this particular model. But let's move on to the back seats where this is going to be the main difference. One, you actually have to move the seat yourself. So once you do that, you can sit here and adjust the seat as needed. And then you'll notice right off the bat, this divider between both seats where we have some audio and one cup holder in the middle. You'll notice too that this seat is all the way back. So obviously there's no leg room there but you feel kind of separated with the seats in the back. If I turn this around at five foot 10, I am much lower than in the M4. So the M4, I could actually sit upright in here. You have no storage, you have no armrest, you have small windows here, and this is kind of it. You don't have the ability to move the center out of the way or even to kind of relax with this in your way here. So it is definitely much tighter but somewhat doable. I have read in the back of my brother's. So we have a GTR playlist if you wanna see everything he has done with his car, but I've been in the back and it's, it's pretty tight. You'll notice too that we have the heated seat control on this side. They are not ventilated like in the M4. So let's start this up where we have a much, much different layout. We have the leather steering wheel with paddle shifters, Controls on the steering wheel, very similar to the BMW, so you can go through your music and some other controls like that. And then you can go through a little bit of information in the lower section by using these buttons on the right side. So you're basically looking at your MPG, your miles, and your range, as well as the outside temperature, some maintenance, 
and that's pretty much it. So not as configurable as the M4. You have your mirror adjustments. They are power folding, trunk release, parking sensors. You have a spot where you can place the key too. No head up display, leather on the entire dash though. And then a pretty good size screen, CD player up top. You can get into your menu here, so you can go through all this info. Very similar to what you would see, of course, in other Nissan models. You have your audio, navigation, a little bit more on the old school side compared to the uh, M4, but it still gives you what you need to go through. You can scroll and tune as needed. You have all of your climate adjustments, and then you do have different driver profiles. So you can go through this for your suspension. You have a few different modes as well as your traction control, and then you even have your transmission here. So you can go through R mode, you have save mode, comfort mode. So you have a few that you can go through. And again, my brother has more detailed videos on this since he did own one for five years. But you do have those adjustments there to really liven this up. We have the backup camera, so no 360 view. Handbrake, which is manual, cup holders in the middle. You do have a small dial down below that you can further go through this. So very similar to the BMW there. You have the center armrest with some auxiliaries tucked away in the back there. And then the glove box as well, which is all the way down there, has additional space. And then you have the rear view mirror, sunglass holder up top, which the BMW does not have. And then a look at visibility. While that is a smaller window, it's honestly not all that bad to see around in both directions. You can't even sneak your head out that back window there. So a little bit more old school feeling in a sense compared to the M4. But now with the exteriors and interiors out of the way, let's get both of these vehicles out on the road and see how they drive. So we'll set up behind the wheel for the BMW M4 competition. What I love about this vehicle and driving it is the fact that we have so many different driving modes to really liven this vehicle up or to tone it down for daily driving. This is a very comfortable daily driving, more like a GT style vehicle, but it gives you all that power and performance you're looking for at the same time. So we have a video taking an M4 Comp to the mountains where that also had the upgraded competition seats, which hold you so well for this vehicle. And so this is a lot of fun. You get all of the modern amenities and you get a very fun vehicle that's pretty loud for that exhaust. It's again, more comfortable and refined for being the BMW version. But we have super quick shifts and just a nice place to be. It's very quiet and comfortable feeling and you can definitely dial this in for the driving that you are doing. So check out the full reviews as well to see more driving, but basically initial impressions with the M4 is just how comfortable and refined it is. Being a BMW, of course, all of the materials are very, very nice. And in the GTR from second gear, here we go. This is definitely just as quick. Obviously it is slightly quicker and you can really rip on this, put it in the different driving modes to daily drive this versus taking it to the mountain roads and tracks. So very similar to the BMW. This GTR that we're in though is 100% bone stock. So if you're looking for a vehicle like this that hasn't been modded, perfect example to go with. It's not crazy loud either. But it sounds good, just like the M4. For the stock exhaust right out of the gate, this is definitely a fun car to drive. Now, I don't have as much experience behind the wheel of the GTR as I do the M4. I gotta say, this is a nice interior. For not having all of the techie feel, like that large curved screen, this is something that is definitely doable. If you're not looking for that large screen, you don't really need all that. You just wanna hop in this car and drive you have what you need. You can pair your phone to the system, pull up the map. You can still go through all those creature comforts to daily drive this without having it, just a different style. So if it's just your style for something that looks a little bit more on the simple side, but still gives you the features that you're looking for, this is a great option. I would say it still has a similar feel as the M4. Both of them kind of have more of that, it's hard to describe. They kind of have that raw feeling, 
but at the same time too, it's something that is comfortable enough and refined enough to be a great daily driver. Handling is very good. Boy, this is a lot of fun to drive too. It's really hard to, to kind of tell the differences with just the driving that I'm doing today, but I'll link down below driving the GTR through the mountains as well as the M4 through the mountains. I feel like this is a little bit more raw feeling. The BMW is a little bit more luxurious being a BMW, of course. It's a little more refined. We still have some great materials in the GTR though. So honestly, you can daily drive both of these. They are something that is going to give you a little bit of extra room, but it's going to give you a very highly performance oriented vehicle. And so back from the test drives between the Nissan GTR and the BMW M4. Honestly, these are both very, very fun sports cars to drive. Again, check out our uh, GTR playlist if you wanna see all of the modifications that my brother did. Huge platform for the GTR. There's also a huge platform for the M4 as well as doing tuning to it and any aftermarket mods that you would like to do. Both of these have kind of a very similar drive to them. I'll say the GTR is a little bit more on the raw feeling side compared to the M4. The M4 is a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more modern, of course, in feeling compared to the uh, GTR. But both are phenomenal options and there's a lot of different options you can go with. New and used, of course, will also depend on that price range that I mentioned earlier. But comment down below, are you taking the GTR home or are you taking the M4 home? Comment down below, let me know. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.